Hello everyone, this is Miss Purnell, and today I'm going to teach you all how to use a Bunsen burner, which is a really powerful tool when you need a consistent hot flame um, or source of heat to heat things, and we'll be using these often in class this year. The first thing that we need to talk about is safety. When you need to light a Bunsen burner, you first need to secure the area. Make sure there are no papers, technology, or anything around that could possibly catch on fire or be damaged by the source of heat. The second step is secure yourself. Make sure your hair is pulled back, put goggles on, and make sure any loose sleeves or loose clothing are tucked in or rolled up. The third step is to check your equipment. Make sure that your hose is in good shape and make sure all the pieces of your burner are where they need to be. First, let's talk about the pieces. We have a regulator which controls the amount of gas that gets let into the burner. We have an air inlet that controls the amount of air that gets into the burner and then we have a tube that leads to our gas source. Obviously the flame comes out of the top of the Bunsen burner. When you're ready you've secured your area, you've secured yourself, you've checked your equipment and checked your hose to make sure there's no cracks or uh, holes in the hose where gas can leak into the room you are ready to set your Bunsen burner up um, to get ready to light your flame. To set your Bunsen burner up, you're going to close the regulator completely and open it two full turns. This way you know how much gas is coming out. The second step is to close the air inlet completely because during lighting we don't want any air coming in. Lastly, you need to place your hose onto the, plate, the gas inlet of the burner and attach the other end of the hose to where the gas comes out of in the classroom. The next step is to use your striker to actually light the burner. First, you'll need to open up the gas source and then you will use your striker which has a flint on it that rubs against a rough surface of metal that creates a spark. The gas coming out of the burner will encounter the spark and ignite. If you can't get the burner lit within three tries with the striker, you need to shut the gas off, let it clear, and then try again. The reason for this is that the gas will build up as you're trying to use the striker. And when you finally get a spark from the striker, all the gas that's been let out will ignite, creating a huge ball of fire. Sounds really fun, but it's not so fun when it's your hand or your eyebrow that's in the way. Once you get your burner lit, it will look like this flame on the left, the luminous flame, because the air inlet is closed. What we want is a non-luminous flame, which is good for heating. So what we need to do is open up that air inlet a little bit to get a nice blue hot flame. You can do this easily. The inlet doesn't really get hot and uh, you can easily adjust the air. You want to do so gently because if you add too much air it can actually blow your whole flame out and then you have to start over. So on the left we have a luminous flame with no air and on the right we have our heating flame or non-luminous flame with the air inlet slightly open. Now you're ready to use your Bunsen burner but it's important to remember that once you actually heat something, hot glass and metal don't look any different than cold glass and metal. So you need to have a really good memory of what you've put over the burner and make sure you don't grab anything with your bare hands. Always use tongs or gloves to handle things that have been over the Bunsen burner. Good luck and be safe using your Bunsen burner.